How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be going over the differences between array for each and array map in JavaScript because in my experience I've seen plenty of instances where array for each was used when it was probably more appropriate for array map to be used instead. So this here is a vital piece of information if you're learning JavaScript and this video is going to focus on transforming arrays. Okay, so in this example right here, I've got a list of user objects which contains their name and the year that they joined this imaginary website. Now let's say we want to take this list of users and build a string for each one which just summarizes their name and also the year that they joined. To do this, we can use array for each. Let's have a look. So. Hopping down here, we're going to make a new array called summaries equal to, of course, an empty array. Okay. Now, from here, we're going to loop over every single user using array for each and append to this summaries array a simple string. So we'll say here, users dot for each. Okay. I'm going to grab onto the user using this arrow function. And then we're going to simply say, inside the for each summaries dot append or push. Okay. Then within here, we're going to use the template string. So the back tick near the one on your keyboard. Now from here, we're going to use dollar sign then curly braces to uh, insert an expression. We're going to simply say user dot name and then say uh, joined in then just say once again dollar sign curly brackets and we'll say user dot year join. So of course now it's going to take the user's name and say user's name joined in and then the user's year joined year. Okay. Then I can say console.log summaries and we should see those three strings in the console in the form of the array. I'll save this go inside the browser here. I'll do a refresh. And you can see you get these three strings. If I expand this down, we of course get John joined in 2017 and so on. So we've achieved the task, okay? We've taken this single array and we've transformed it by creating a new array called summaries, which contains the transformed values. And as you can see, an important piece of information here is that the transformed values are derived from the user objects themselves. So we've got this function running for each user. And again, yeah, that transformed value is based on the element being uh, looped over at the current point in time, right? Now this works, but array map was built for this purpose. Okay. Array map is used for transforming arrays and we can simplify this code. So instead of declaring the array up here and having this for each and so on, we can essentially in a way combine these two steps into a single line. Let's just comment out this part. Okay. The for each then up here, we'll say const summaries equal to, then we can say users dot map. All right. From here, map is going to allow you to run a function for every single item on the array, just like for each does. But the important thing here is it's going to return a new array into summaries with each transformed value in its respective position. So we'll say here, users.map, then pass in that callback function once again. Okay, just like this. Now, instead of pushing to the array, we're going to simply return what we want the transformed value to be. So we'll say return. Then we can simply copy what we did down here with the string. Okay. And it's that simple guys. So now we have this function running for every item in the array, whatever gets returned for that item, that's what the transformed value is going to be for the item in this array in that same position. So index zero here in summaries is going to be whatever we did with this object up here. Now, if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh and see, we get the same result. And this is where array map was 
uh, appropriately used. Now, I'd also like to point out that you can access more information in the array map function, just like you can with array for each. So if I was to use parentheses around the user right here, you can see that if I write a comma, you get the current value in the first position in the argument list, then you have the index. So if you need the index of that user, for example, I can say I like this, I can just simply uh, go inside here, I'll just put square brackets in front of the username, and then of course use dollar sign curly brackets again and pass in that I, then I'll just say plus one to take the zero based index, add one to it to give us one, two, three, save this back in the browser, refresh here, now, of course, get one, two, three uh, in your string. So yeah, you can you can access the index uh, of each item if you need that information. I find myself using this every couple of times I need to use uh, array map. Now, this is the uh, this is the expected scenario for using array map when you're transforming the arrays. But when is it more appropriate uh, to use array for each? Well. In scenarios where you're not transforming the array, but you are instead performing an action, so for example, something external, that is where I would say it's more appropriate to be using array for each because you're just saying, look, for each item, perform this action, okay? So as an example, I'll get rid of all this code here. I'm now gonna say users.foreach. I'll grab the user. Then I'm just gonna say, alert, then json.stringify, and pass in the user. Now, of course, alerting each user object isn't too exciting, but it's just an example, right? So I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh again, and now, of course, we get the JSON stringified version for the first user, second, and third, okay? So the point I'm trying to make here is, there was no array transformation. We're not building a new array based on this data in the for each, okay? We're simply performing an external action that might go and do something else, okay? Think about things like maybe making API requests or updating the DOM or your user interface based on each of these users, right? Okay, so if you find yourself having to declare a new array up here, right, and then loop over using push, etc. it's probably better to instead use array map. Now, of course, you can do things like the alert or any actions in array map because that code still executes, right, in the map function, but it's probably not expected. If, if another developer is reading your code and your array map is doing external actions and things like that, that's probably not appropriate I would even say to separate that out into its own for each, just for uh, you know overall clarity and structure within your uh, JavaScript file, okay? That is all for this video. If this one helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to Decode, and here is another video.